Landlords, what is the stupidest reason you've had to evict someone? I can answer that. Tenant was growing weed in the house. Other tenants were complaining. Called in and told him to get rid of it. I don't care about it being illegal, it is where I am. But I take the complaints from the other tenants seriously. He said he would. Couple of days later the other tenants call and say the plant is still there. So I met him and said if you don't get rid of the plant now, I'm calling the cops. He said call them. So I did. Arrested and evicted in one easy motion. What an idiot. LOL. What a dumb boss. They built a turtle habitat without permission in the basement. Heard this story second hand from a friend who knows the tenant. They started a turtle breeding business, so they decided to flood the basement with maybe 6 inches of water. The entire basement. It was a concrete floor, but there was still drywall on the wall. Don't know how the landlord found out, or how long they had the habitat, but he kicked them out immediately. No notice. It was either leave now or he'd sue for damages. Next day they were out. This is so far the most underrated response to the question. I mean it involves a total habitat. Not a landlord, but, I knew a guy in college that moved into an off-campus apartment with his friends, because he was completely broke and irresponsible. He didn't add himself to their lease, in an attempt to avoid fees for additional occupants, and he didn't pay rent to his roommates. About a year later, his friends graduated and moved out, and they gave him plenty of warning so that he could get his crap together and move out. He did exactly nothing. The landlord came and told him that he had to vacate, because the lease had ended, which led to the dumbest excuses I've ever heard in my life. Well, this isn't my apartment, so it's not my job to pay rent. I just live here. Later on Facebook, he tried to twist this into a sob story. Can you believe they just evicted me? If he wasn't on the lease and all the people on tell lease had moved out he's lucky they evicted him and didn't have him arrested for squatting. Guy got evicted from university housing because he was using the fire sprinkler head as the end point of a clothesline. This broke the sprinkler head, flooded half my floor, fourth floor, and every apartment underneath down to the base level. I work in insurance, specifically subrogation. You have no idea how many sprinkler head claims we get. Cause some dumbass guests in a hotel hung their clothes on it. I had a claim that I had pics of the hanger, on the sprinkler, literally above a sign that says don't hang clothing on this. People are freaking stupid. <laughs> had to evict someone for not using the shower curtain. They took a long shower and flooded their bathroom, which ran down and flooded the apartment below them. We lost the downstairs tenant as well. Plus insurance wouldn't cover the damages since it wasn't from a burst pipe or other plumbing issue. Then when they were evicted they asked for their damage deposit back. We lost the downstairs tenant as well. Dang. You really buried the lead there. Drowned by his upstairs neighbor. What a way to go. My dorm mate freshman year got evicted for rolling through the hallway on an office chair blasting a big fire extinguisher. What an absolute mad lad. My sister used to have some duplexes she rented out. One tenant was several months late on payments and numerous times the tenant promised she was working on getting the money. My sister was being nice because the tenant was in a hard spot and recovering. One day she went by to visit and the tenant had a brand new tattoo sleeve all the way down her arm. When confronted about why the money wasn't used to pay rent the tenant said they really wanted the tattoo. The eviction process started immediately. New tattoo or pay the rent. My welfare check was quickly spent. Not a landlord, but, when I was living in a dorm there was a mysterious case of small plastic bags filled with poo appearing on a tree in front of the dorm building overnight. How did they get there? A foreign student seemed to have had some kind of toilet shyness and didn't want to use the shared dorm restrooms, so he did his business into small plastic bags. He then decided, instead of discarding those bags discreetly, to just throw the bags out of his window into the tree at night. This didn't go well with the facility management of the dorm and he lost his dorm room. My dad was a landlord and one of the tenants tore out the cabinet doors and replaced them with chicken wire and put chickens in the cabinets. What the frick? Tenant left all the windows open I'm rainstorms apparently and didn't clean up water that blew in and every single window in the house was rotted and had black mold. They asked for their deposit back. God. And to think I felt guilty asking for my last deposit back because the landlord gave me crap about a 2 inch stain on the carpet near the front door. 
I'm not a landlord but a property manager, so manage properties on behalf of landlords. We had a group of tenants that climbed out of their kitchen window to smoke on the flat roof outside. Fell through and caused tons of damage to the shop immediately below then attempted to have a pop at us as we never informed them that they couldn't climb out of the window. Later that tenancy, one of the same tenants, there were four total, two involved in the roof thing, put a pan on the hob then forgot about it which set fire to the kitchen. They complained that the ash aggravated their asthma. They didn't seem to understand why their tenancy wasn't renewed and why we kept their deposit. My landlord had to evict the two young men living in the basement apartment. They got into a habit of terrorizing the poor old lady living on the first floor. And they would also always turn the heat of the building up to 45C. It was a huge fire hazard. Let's say we were happy they left. The heat control for the whole building shouldn't be accessible to the tenants. My dad's the landlord but I'm technically second voice of the property. We own the house next door for renting purposes. This tenant was the definition of I'll pay you eventually. She only talks to my dad if she needs help, otherwise she avoids us. But I'll get back to that. This woman had a dog and all that time we thought it was hers. She treated it like garbage. Barely took care of it. One day she left this little puppy in the snow and my mom was furious. Before we could call over the dog to give him some warmth. The tenant walked out, grabbed him and slammed the door. She would keep using pet fees as an excuse to hold off on rent and we learned that A. She was lying and B. The dog wasn't even hers. From what I put together, she held her ex's dog hostage and took it out on him by not taking good care of him. My dad, after realizing it went to confront her and she hid from him, then drove away, claiming she had a party to go to. My dad blocked the driveway with his car and said he's move it once she pays her rent. She was so hysterical, it got to the point where she got her dad involved, but he ended up taking our side. Her dad paid the rent, sent the dog back and we were done with her. My husband and I just bought a new rental and had to evict one of the tenants because they were running an illegal water ice business out of the home. The previous owner had to pay user occupancy fines before the sale could clear and we didn't want to risk being on the hook for those same fines when the tenant inevitably started the business up again. I helped my father evict a tenant from the second house he owned and was renting out. The house had a small secure garage attached to it, but rather than use this to repair his motorbikes, the tenant had three of them inside the house, two in the living room, in bits and one in the spare room upstairs, also in bits, oil everywhere. He'd spilt at least one gallon of oil downstairs which had soaked into the carpet and floor underneath. He'd taken the carpet up and thrown it in the garden. Upstairs there were numerous small spills, carpet wrecked again, dirty handprints all over the doors and walls, especially on the stairwell, kitchen cupboards and so on. We found out as the neighbors were complaining about the smell of petrol, he had a leaking fuel tank in the kitchen, on the draining board. It was very slow so thankfully he hadn't blown the house up, but the kitchen stank, along with the outside drain. My father had a clause in the rental agreement that specifically prohibited any kind of workshop type activity in the house. No woodwork, pottery, engine repairs etc. So it was fairly easy to evict him, took 2 months. He didn't even ask for his deposit back and left 2 of the bikes behind. 2 crappy old Hondas that were beyond repair. My father sold them for a few quid to help pay for the repairs to the house. Not a landlord but a tenant. My girlfriend and I just moved from a place with a year lease that was a duplex. It had 4 apartments, all 1 bedroom and ours was the biggest. We were really cool with the landlord and always paid rent on time. The landlord had some crazy stories but one happened while we were living there. I guess this dude moved into one of the apartments upstairs. After a few weeks, we never heard noises coming from upstairs and his light would be on 24 stroke 7. Next thing we know I had a guy knock on my door asking if we could help him move some of his daughter's things into that same apartment. I obliged because moving sucks and it was only a few items. Just awkward for one person. Well, next time we paid rent, the landlord stopped by and asked if we heard any noises coming from upstairs because that guy had gone to jail. The guy who I helped moved his daughter's things into the apartment had called our landlord and said he moved his daughter's things in there because they were dating. It came down to the landlord just having to let her live there for a few weeks because it would have been more costly and time consuming than just evicting her. I thought that was crazy. 
she kept shutting off the power to the airbnb a unit above her. Also she assaulted an airbnb guess. That was pretty dumb of her. Not the landlord. Son of the landlord. Parent had to evict tenants because they kept damaging stuff in the house than taking my parent to court to demand this be fixed. One tenant is now in jail for breaking back into the house to rob me after being evicted. Not much of a silver lining but the dude in jail didn't have to worry about rent for a while. Obligatory not a landlord, but my dorm mate got evicted for getting really drunk, having to throw up, not wanting to do it in the toilet, and against me and my friend telling him not to, smashed the window and puked out the window onto a car, kicked him out but not me and my friend meaning we had to pick up extra rent money. Every tenant we've evicted was for not paying rent for 3 plus months. And since in our country, the electric bill has to be in the property owner's name, we get to pay their electric bills as well. Or the next tenant wouldn't have electricity. Our second to last tenant abandoned a cat at the apartment, so we had to deal with a cat and cat crap and cat food scattered around the place. The last tenant randomly brought home a huge bus dog, no yard, that they never walked and just left on the terrace all day and night. The dog destroyed the walls on the terrace some walls inside the apartment, and the walls on the rooftop patio. We also had to clean the massive amounts of dog crap and pee left everywhere. I hate being a landlord. Something makes me think that running background checks and references would minimize all of that nonsense. Not the landlord, but a friend of mine just had to evict someone from a home she owned after the following convo. T equals tenant, F equals friend, comma T, hey. Just wanted to give you a heads up that money is pretty tight RN, so won't be able to make rent this month, comma F, okay. As per our contract, you technically have until the 3rd to pay, and it doesn't accrue late fees until the 5th, comma T, oh, sorry, I should have been more clear, I won't be able to afford rent at all this month, comma F, I mean, each day after the 5th is $50 in late fees, do you know when you'll be able to pay? Comma T, as per my text, I won't be paying rent this month. Took her a couple weeks to get a court date, but said tenant is now out of the property with a shitload of bills now in collections. I know landlords have it tough, but 50 a day in late fees is kinda crazy. If your paychecks just happen to line up poorly in a month then you just get fricked into a hole you can dig out of. Not a landlord. But I used to work in a large hotel that was connected to a high-rise apartment building. I saw someone get evicted because they made a homemade jacuzzi with an inflatable pool that burst and flooded several apartments below. This thread is testament to the reason I will never become a landlord. A few times in my 50 years, people have approached me about buying a property jointly and then renting it out. One fellow tried selling me his rental property. All I need is to read threads like this to be convinced that I never want that headache. I currently have a tenant who hasn't paid rent in 3 months. Come Friday it will be 4 months. We have to wait until December to have the hearing to decide whether he will be evicted. He won't. I promise. And at that point he will owe me 5 months rent. My parents were landlords in Canada. My dad once gave a dude that was always late on rent. Sold drugs and her the cops to the building all the time 10 grand to just go away so the other tenants wouldn't all move out. Not the landlord and not me, but a distant relative I have was evicted because he started to breed dogs in his family cottage. He wasn't supposed to be in the family cottage at the time as it's only a 3 season cottage in a remote part of Ontario and he's not a dog breeder in the slightest. He's actually a chef. So when they came to open up the cottage for winter and found him. His new girlfriend and 40 puppies in the cottage with destroyed floors they were quite surprised. He's a chef. Obviously he was running an illegal dog meat farm. Worked in university housing. Girl got kicked out because she wouldn't stop smoking in her room. It's dumb. Because she was a few steps from a door outside. And she had been told to stop and been fined at least a dozen times. Just wouldn't stop. I had to evict my tenants so because they were throwing roadkill over the fence, threatening to burn the neighbor's house down, was naked on the roof, put a hole through my wall, put all my furniture, it's a furnished rental, on the lawn, several times, did, 
Something in the master closet, unidentifiable stain, openly did them in the backyard, broke a window, they didn't show up to the hearing both no one could find them to serve them, I knew they were sleeping in the abandoned lot next to Walmart but no one asked me. I'm not the landlord but I have an eviction story so please don't hate me, my wife and I bought a house 2.5 years ago. Before we moved in it was a rental property and the previous tenants had been evicted. As soon as we moved in the neighbors told us the stories about the renters. They owned animals, lots of them, usually between 10-12 dogs and about 3 cats. When the previous owner came to inspect the property he immediately evicted them because they had been allowing the animals to destroy the place. The owner had to have much of the drywall, carpeting and flooring replace. The old stuff was put in a dumpster in front of the house and the neighbors said you could smell it for miles. Not a landlord, but while I was a case manager I had a few folks get evicted for odd reasons. 1. Evicted because he was running the shower non-stop to humidify his apartment. He believed that it was his right, since hot water was included in his rent. His apartment was so humid that he had both mold and mushrooms growing in every corner. The building's water bill had increased by $500 in the 3 months he lived there. 2. Several times, clients have sold the apartment's fridge and stove for drug or gambling money, and one person sold them to pay the rent. 3. Evicted because he went all Sheldon Cooper and vandalized a car that was in his assigned parking spot. He did not own a car. 4. Evicted because she had about 20 live chickens in her 10th floor urban apartment. For food, not pets. 5. Evicted because client's mom was sexually harassing the landlord. She was arrested several times for disrespecting the pop and restraining orders. Also had a client get evicted for trying to exchange sexual favors for rent. 6. Evicted for peeing everywhere except the toilet, which was in pristine, mint condition when he left. So many questions. Was the chicken lady slaughtering the chickens in her apartment too? They must have pooped everywhere too. I will never understand people. Had to evict a guy because he believed that he could set the price of his rent to whatever he wanted. It doesn't work that way. Rent prices aren't negotiable. Rent prices aren't negotiable. The last place me and a buddy of mine were renting were begging us to stay after we told them we're moving. They were trying to bargain us with lowered rent. The house was actually in better condition when we moved out. Anything can be negotiable in the right circumstances. My dad used to own a large farm property across the road from us. It was about 100 acres of just empty land with a house by the road. A local buffalo farmer, yes that is a thing apparently, was renting the land for the buffalo while someone else was renting the house to live in. Mr. Buffalo Farmer kept mentioning the general disrepair the tenants were keeping the house in and the large amount of garbage piling up behind the house. IDK how it is now but Canadian law back then was heavily in the tenants favor so we really couldn't do anything about it. Evicting people takes years and they never seem to be home or answer the phone which made contacting them difficult. Finally one night the trash pile caught fire and almost burned the house down and the fire department discovered a grow up in the basement when they went in to check the house. They weren't actually living there they were just growing weed which was still highly illegal back then. The house has since been demolished. A guy I went to high school with rented a flat with some friends for his first year of university, and they decided to throw a beach themed flat warming party. They got a load of sand and spread it around the carpeted living room. The party got out of hand and when the landlord came and found the carpet full of sand they were evicted and since they couldn't find somewhere else to live he dropped out of university. The best part was to get rid of the sand they dumped it through the gaps in the decking. Six months later he got another bill because the decking foundations had rotted away. I own a holiday house in another country, rented out through an agency. There's an option to rent it out for longer periods during the off season and this trust fund wannabe artist stayed for 16 months over 3 years. He was overly dramatic and needy and caused the agency quite a bit of headache. This will turn into a novel if I go in details. He was officially evicted and banned from the place when he decided to paint a mural on the living room wall. He threatened to sue the agency if they don't compensate him for his work and caused so much drama that he got escorted by the police. My dad owns a duplex. A few years ago, he had this tenant that was pretty quiet and introverted. 
Well one day, the cops kicked his door in with a warrant for his computer, and they found a frick load of child pee on his hard drive. Guess who got to install a new exterior door? She didn't pay her portion of section 8. The rent was $1,500. Section 8 paid $1,450. She couldn't pay $50 a month. Crap. I wish I my rent was 50 bucks. Had a family of 4 move in. They started parking their car. Then cars on the lawn and not on the driveway. They acquired additional cars. Other family members moved in. Daughter got pregnant and gave birth to twins. This is a 3 bedroom, 1500 square house. There were now 11 people living in the house. They would not take out garbage and just drop it on the ground. When their toilets clogged, the plumber refused to do work when he has seen their living conditions. They were blasting music so loud that other neighbors fed up with them actually came to attack the tenants as they were seriously impacting their life. It has gotten so bad in the second year that once the sheriff has gotten to evict them, they were stunned. They did pay their rent on time though, most of it being from a voucher off sec. 8. I'm surprised there wasn't an anonymous tip to children's services if there were newborn twins living in those kinds of conditions. Only my third so far, so may not sound that stupid, but here goes. Resident signed her lease when we were running one stroke two off first month's rent special. Moved in. Paid all her money. Next month she paid rent. The next month she didn't pay. Sent her the legal 3 day notice and she called complaining that she got a month free month of rent. Read her lease out to her. She still didn't believe me but gave up. Said she'd have money by the end of the month. Okay. We'll work with her. Kept paying late. Almost sent to evictions then she got caught up. Then she stopped paying again. Almost sent to evictions and lo and behold. She gave her notice. Okay. We'll just send any remaining debt to collections. No big deal. She turned in her keys. We went to inspect and there was a man asleep in the living room. Told him to get out. But turns out he was the boyfriend and was living with her and had no idea she moved out. Well. He's not on the lease so guess who's going to eviction finally? She probably thinks she left him there high and dry to deal with us but nope. She is the one that's going to face legal troubles. I guess it is not a stupid reason. But I once had a tenant doing C in the fourth bedroom. A finished basement. I was cutting the guys living there a deal and allowed an additional person to move in if they were all cool with it. They were cool until he started ripping C on a semi-regular basis. Some of the guys decides to move out to not be around it and paid to get out of the lease. So I just evicted that guy since he wasn't in the lease and started from fresh. A real pain in the butt. But I have a much better family living there now. So I guess it all worked out for the best. Not a landlord. But my landlady shared this story with me. One of her tenants had left an aerosol can on top of the stove while he she was cooking. The heat caused the gases in the can to expand and explode. Causing $40,000 worth of damage to the property. Said tenant said he she couldn't understand why he she was responsible for paying the damages instead of the insurance company. Not me but my mum had to evict someone because they were cutting holes in the blinds so they could see their people on their front porch. There was also a lot of sea residue found all over the couches, tables and beds. They also had a 2 year old child. Freaking heck. This was a good read but god dang. How hard is it to be good people and pay your crap in a timely matter? My husband and I are newly homeowners. We were renters 2 years ago. I think in the time span of 3 years of renting the house we were late on our rent maybe 2 twice and only by a few days. Once we moved out we cleaned the house top to bottom including the yard. So much so that we not only got our whole security deposit back, but received a little extra because the yard was cleaner than what we had got it. We lived on a half acre. I cannot for the life of me wrap my mind around these stories. I had to evict this chick out because she made me eat her out while she was on her period. Her boyfriend said which I wasn't too keen on but, he follow up with she doesn't bath or use toilet paper for anything. For those, I was living with them. House in my name. Thank god I had them on a month to month lease. Realizing she touch everything, didn't wash her hands was a no go. I knew they fought but now I know why. So end half of the month comes. I told her she needed to be out. She agreed because of the fighting not how she believed she didn't stink, or felt she was dirty. She confirmed what he had said. So end of the month comes. She leaves. 
he's still there. I remind him he needs to pay for that month rent. He asked for a free month of rent because he was a victim. I said no. He said give him 2 weeks. I said fine. Try to help him find a job. Nothing. I go get a 3 day eviction notice. He left the room trashed. Finger my good peanut butter too. We recently moved out of our house so we decide to rent it to the seemly normal family. Husband, wife and three children. Welp. Apparently the wife got something going with her own cousin so when they did a party and he was over the husband got crazy jealous. He at least shot 8 times inside the house chasing the cousin. The cousin run away in his car crashing the neighbor's cars in the process. The police arrived and stole a few things. So does the wife said, when they took the husband away. My parents out of pity decide to give her another chance to stay in the house since the children liked it with the condition he wasn't allowed get near the house or live in it. She decided to leave the house since she loved him and knew he wouldn't shoot her. We had to fix multiple walls and doors since the bullets went through them. This all happened in 3 weeks of they moving in. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.